to all my black entrepreneurs. We got to do better, y'all. So tune in to the Entrepreneurians Podcast, where we help build better black businesses. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurians Podcast. I'm your girl, Tiffany Nicole, the CEO, and that is Last Trace. I'm your guy, Last <laughs> Trace. And this is the... <laughs> Will Thomas of that's Rex most, Philly. That's not Will Smith. Not Will Smith. Okay. 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 <laughs> he said he's the second most famous boy right. in Philly. Come on, man. I got there more melanin. Go. My beard is thicker. There you, you go. He saying. got the Philly beard and everything. You got to give it to him. My bad, bro. You should have slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so we are here with we are here to get some tips and tricks and resources Let's from Mr. It. Will. So what you got for us? I know you got a lot because this is a lot here. So Yeah. So so I do know the next segment we're going to talk about books. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I do think it's appropriate to just mention mm-hmm. the book that I wrote. Um, and, and, you know, maybe I'll, I'll give some tips from there. Okay. I think that would be helpful. Um, so for context, the book that I, that I just published uh, just last Friday is Uncommon Sense, Your Strategy Guide to Creative Freedom. And... Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Last Friday? Yeah. The six. Yeah, it came out the six, right? six. Oh, yeah. that's true. Brand new. Go get yeah. that book, y'all. Yes. Um, we're going to get back into that. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, so the book was something that I wrote because in my position at REC, I've had the privilege of working with hundreds of creatives. And they're coming from all different types of creative mediums. They've been at all different levels of success mm-hmm. along their journey. And I realized that I kept having the same conversations mm-hmm. with so many different creatives. Mm-hmm. So what I started to do was I started to try to just start documenting some of the combos we were having. Okay. Right? What do people really need to understand? And over time, I ended up putting together about 10 ideas. And okay. it was like, as a creative, if you're going to build a business around your passion, this is what you need to know. Mm. Right. Um, so that's what the book is all about. And it's really a strategy guide. So there's tons of just different exercises in here that if you do them will help you build your business plan. Mm. Right. Um, oh, nice. So there's 10 chapters, 10 ideas. But if I had to just call out one or two that I think is important, um, the, the first tip I would share is what is covered in Chapter seven, which is this idea of a thousand true fans. Have you guys ever heard that concept before? I have on YouTube. Okay, okay cool. Because we're trying to monetize. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you need a thousand subs. But right. I've uh, just just watching videos on monetization, I've learned about or heard about uh, the, how'd you say it, the 1,000 subscribers? A thousand true, a thousand fans. true fans. There's, yeah. a, re- there's a reason why, why YouTube makes you hit that threshold before you start monetizing. And it comes from this guy, his name's Kevin Kelly. And he created this idea called A Thousand True Fans. And basically what he said was, in today's day and age, to be successful, you no longer need to be a household name. You no longer need to have like Beyonce level stardom to make money doing what you love. Mm -hmm. What he says is you actually only need a thousand people. If you get to the point where there's a thousand people who love who you are, love what you represent, will buy whatever it is that you're creating, whether you're doing events or products, et cetera, all you gotta do is figure out how you can be as valuable as possible to those a thousand people. Hmm. And if you do that, you should figure out how to get them to reciprocate that value back to you through event tickets, through you know YouTube revenue, through um, the products, mm-hmm. through all these different channels. Yeah. And if you can get them to give you, let's say $100 each this year, Hundred dollars from a thousand people is a hundred thousand dollars, which is a really great living for most people. Yeah, right. So I say that to say, most artists that I see that hit a kind of like a threshold and they stop, Mm -hmm. it's because what they're trying to do is, let's say you got eight hundred fans, a thousand fans, their mind is like, all right, well, how do I get on Instagram and 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 get a million followers? Right. right? Yeah. And what they do is they start trying to win new fans, win new fans, and they stop loving on the people yeah. who loved on them first. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you get to that point, you have a decision that you have to make and you have to either say, hey, I'm going to love on my people and trust that if I do that properly, their job is to actually get me to more fans, mm-hmm. more true fans, more true, true fans. fans yeah. Right. And real quick to define what a true fan is, a true fan isn't that person who's like, Oh, yeah, 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 I love the podcast, I love the podcast. But when y'all drop a piece of uh, merchandise or y'all y'all have a ticket for an event, they don't buy. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're only really fans by word of mouth, yeah, right? right? That's mm-hmm. not a true fan. Right. A true fan is also not my uncle who every time I drop a product, he buys it, but actually doesn't talk to talk about me to other people, right? Mm-hmm. right? 
they don't really care about the product they care about you yeah right yeah. that's not that's a true just, fan. let me just support my nephew yeah. exactly right. and it's really important that you understand that's not a true fan right a true fan is both of those they're willing to buy whatever you make and they're going to talk about you to other people mm. right your true fans become your marketing department yeah right, right. so once you find those people the worst thing you can do is ignore them. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do is give them the tools to be able to spread the word and champion you to everyone else. Wow, they're like yeah. your ambassadors. They yeah. are absolutely your ambassadors, mm -hmm. right? So I'll give you a quick example of what that looks like. Y'all know Cardi B, mm -hmm. right? Cardi B came on the game, came into the game as a woman who was celebrating a type of person who really didn't have a lot of visibility in culture at that time. Right. right. She was a woman. She was, you know, in different avenues of sex work. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was really showing up for all those women who were in the strip clubs doing their thing. She took ownership of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Unapologetic. Like, yes. Like, right. this is what it is. Bam. Mm -hmm. And when she started making music, she was making music for those women. Mm -hmm. Right. Unapologetically. Right. She got a little bit of stardom from being on that TV show, right? Mm -hmm. So it widened up her mm -hmm. visibility. But when she got there, she was still showing up for those women. Mm -hmm she could have easily said yo i'm trying to be super famous i want to make music for white soccer moms in the bur in the burbs mm -hmm. but if she would have did that she would have lost all of the trust of the people she was actually for yeah. yep but she literally spoke so clearly and consistently to the type of woman she was representing mm -hmm. that now there's white soccer moms in the suburbs that know all the lyrics to Bodak Yellow. Yes, they do. <laughs> but what happened was she got to have her conversation with who it was for and literally the rest of the world leaned in to overhear what was happening because mm -hmm. yeah. they're like, yo, there's something here and I'm missing out. Right. Yeah. But what most people do is they have that 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 prideful audience that they care about. But then they're like, wait, wait, wait but I want more money. I want more visibility. So I'm going to start talking to these people. And as soon as you do that, you lose all the trust of your right. actual core market. That makes so much sense. So just want to share that with people because I, I think too many people chase new people mm -hmm. as opposed to being like, yo, let me really just like nurture the fan group that I already have. Yep. Oh my God, that was a jewel. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 my tip right there. That's what I like that. Bro. I like that because it's that. like um, I'm working on a, doing a subscription box, and I want because you have this is a membership based Dope. place. Dope. So it's like wait, this or are you talking about your you talking no, about right, I'm talking oh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah right, membership right, based absolutely. Yeah, right. membership based. So it's, it's membership it's, style. Exactly. exactly yep. So it's reoccurring. Yep. Monthly income, and that's yep. what we're trying to get to the reoccurring monthly income. And so with the CEO brand, I'm putting together a subscription box for black female entrepreneurs. So, so every month they're going to get, it's going to be themed or whatever. But that concept is so important because mm -hmm. those core people that start out with me, those are my people. Yeah. You those know, and they're adopters. those, yes, those are the ones who are going to say, oh, y'all got to get this box. So yeah. just having that, hearing that is like, it reassure, reassures me that, okay, this is what I got to do. Absolutely. This is how it has to be. And the, these women are my women yeah. because- my woman is the woman who is unapologetically a boss B. Yep. Period. Yep. Like, bougie. you can be mad about bougie. You can be mad about whatever. Like, you see my pens. Like, yep. Love it. this is how we want to be. Yep. Like, and I shouldn't feel a certain type of way for wanting to be like this. Nope. This is how I want to run my business. This is how I want to dress. This is how I want you to see me. Yep. Because I'm showing up like this, and it's okay. Yep. And that's... Especially in today's day and age, it's, it's really more acceptable for CEOs and higher-ranking uh, executives to be flashy and more visibly mm -hmm. marketable yeah. yeah, because you market so much online and it's so visible and yeah. it's so you know you, you want to promote a lifestyle a lot of times yep. so you got to look a certain way yep. and, and bougie is a, is a look it's mm -hmm. a you know, like a look, it's an attitude, it's, an it's everything, yeah. 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 And you shouldn't have to be ashamed for it. And so that's my whole thing going into because it was hard to me to niche down and find the perfect thing that I wanted to do, but I know how I am. Yeah. And certain things that, that I like and I want to use. And so I'm like, okay, it's not just me. Yeah. It got to be others. So, 100% is. So that's how they I feel say, about that. I think there's like 8 billion people on the planet now. I think 7.6 and some change. The numbers alone say if there's 8 billion people on the planet, you could be one in a million. But that means that there's still 8,000 people on the planet exactly like you. Ooh, there you go. Right? So it's like, that's cool. Your, that's your market. You, right? Your market is that's out your there. Market. Your market is out there. 8,000 people. Is, there you go. Exactly. Use this thing to figure out how, how to talk to them. Yeah. You know? Use yep. your phone. Exactly. Yep. That's my biggest thing. That's because, it. like, normally we're behind the scenes so much. Mm -hmm. And this was a super stretch for us mm -hmm. to get in front to of the cameras. Because yeah. it's like the author stuff. Like, I wrote, I wrote the play, but I didn't act in the play. I yeah. just wrote it. Let somebody else direct it. Hold on. I just want to. 
be the creative person. I yeah. don't want to do this stuff. But this is like where it's at. We have to get comfortable. Yep. And this, this is let us get comfortable with it. And, and to be honest, I love when I hear things like that. Because like the people like that, because I, I also um, just resonate with that, right? Like I didn't think that like, like for me, I'm not the person that needs to be out on camera. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm happy behind the scenes. Yes. I direct, I'm a director. I produce music videos mm-hmm. and all that. But it, it came a time and point where I was like, I need to promote my business, right? Yep. And I, I think people like us have such an advantage in this space because we're not driven by ego of mm-hmm. just like, I just want to be seen. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that allows us to realize that like, oh wait, it's not actually about us. Mm-hmm. It's about marketing is about how do I add value to the other person, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I think people forget that and just they because do. they want to be seen, yes. they're out here marketing, but it's like, I think you're just really showing off. You are. When really, like, you should be talking about the value you're going to add to mm-hmm. your next customer, you Very know? Very true. Very so true. I think we have an advantage in that in that regard. Cause Definitely. For sure. Yeah. Yes. We could be more intentional when we show up. Yeah, that's my thing. Because oh, you have to post live, but I'm not going to give up on anything to say. Right. I'm no value to give. Yeah, like, I'm just going to say, hey, y'all. I mean, I mean, <laughs> turkey <laughs> wings today. Like, what? That's not that's not me. Right. Unless like, they I want sh- that turkey wing recipe. Exactly. Know. <laughs> Everybody know I don't cook. I bake. So if I tell me in turkey bakes. wings, it's oh, like, nice. you know I ain't make this. So what's, sure. what's the point of me saying it? Like, okay. you know, so it's just. Yeah. Yeah, we own a bakery also. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we do everything. Yeah, we do everything. Airbnbs. We got Airbnbs. <laughs> um, wow. We get. Oh God. Yeah, we're we're serial entrepreneurs. We like. We like diff- We like um. Avenues of revenue. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's right. our thing. Multiple, so, multiple, yeah. multiple streams. Yeah, yeah. Like Toro we streams. actually started a Toro business. Oh, fire. yeah. But so we was we had four Airbnb units. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. And man. we were starting a Toro business to add vehicles. Yeah. To have vehicles available for our <clears throat> for our guests. Yeah. Um and then COVID happened. Yeah, I uh, got it. So we actually downsized on our Airbnbs. We're down to one now. Okay. Um we actually closed our bakery. We had a brick and mortar bakery wow. in, in um Glenside. Glenside. Okay. Tiff bakes in the house now Dope. for the uh, the annual customers that she's cool. had over the years, mm-hmm. um, but COVID changed a lot. So yeah, we we started the tour business, but okay. it never we never went in anywhere with it. We didn't even okay. get any cars because got it. got it. Okay, right when we started COVID, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I ask because I'm interested. I'm about to buy you know a car soon, and I'm throwing that thing right on tour. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, it ain't, it ain't yeah. about nothing to me. I'm like, let's yeah. make some money. Do you yeah. drive now? I don't have a car right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's perfect for you. Yeah, right. exactly. Oh my so God. I'm about to grab yeah. this Tesla, throw it right on Toro. Oh, yo, oh yeah. you know what? I'm I was going to say, kind of, what kind of car? Yeah. I was going to recommend Tesla. starting with a Tesla because yes. yeah. we've done our hist- our yeah. homework yeah. on yeah. Toro yeah. and a Tesla is yeah, absolutely like, the first car you should Because everybody thinks exotic cars, but we're in Philly. That's not no. going to work here. No. Absolutely that's, that's when people go on vacation in Miami and Vegas and stuff. That's not... When people come on vacation here, they're going to see Ben Franklin and all them right, downtown. Right, right. They don't need no Lambo. Right. So, but here, Teslas do great. Absolutely. They do great. Yeah, that'll be good. Thank Especially you. with the ca- high gas prices. Fast. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that's, that's an issue. So, y'all but, ready to get into this book club segment? I'm not. I got a question. Come okay. on. Let's get so, it. With, the, with the resources and stuff. So, I know you guys were down um, 9th Street. So, yeah. what was the process of getting here? Yeah. Because cool. I know that, that was like... Mm. Serious because this they read this was closed for like ten years. Yeah, the guy was closed for like ten yep. years. It was a whole lot of remodeling yep. and a whole lot of money. Yeah, you still work here in the Yeah, hey, right, right across so the hallway. Dope. Yeah, okay, I, that's my whole store. Love it's not it. there no more though. But right. yeah, but I know that it was a lot to to get here to, to let you guys actually come in here and do yeah. this because they're looking at they want retail stuff. Yeah, but this this, this is, is dope. Yeah, so, it's a yeah. fashion Thank district you. now. You yeah. can't. I mean, maybe maybe. Back in the old gallery, exactly. you could have came in on some ninja right. business. Right, right, right. But this but is not different. Not, not, not that it's different. Nah, they put about a half a billion dollars into the redeveloping this space. Yeah, to, I to can change believe it from it. the gallery to the fashion district. So, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a little hard to bring the ninja business into uh, the, yeah, into the yeah. space now. But yeah, I could definitely give some tips on like yeah. fundraising and how it, we're able yeah. to do that, if that would be helpful. And because you guys get like sponsorships or whatever for all yeah. this equipment and, yep. and you got Red Bull, we can just go get Red Bull if you want to. It's like, it's just so mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. It's just dope. <laughs> One of the things that I, th- that I think that we're really great at is being able to tell our story in a way that it resonates with brands that want to become partners and okay. sponsors. Um, and over time, I realized that 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 is the exact same strategy for fundraising. Okay. Right? Um, So for anyone who's out there and they're like, yo, I'm trying to raise money for anything, right? Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, I want to 
raise a seed round for my startup or hey i even want to just try to get a bank to give me a loan mm-hmm. or whatever it is like banks are a little bit different but in the essence of fundraising it's really just a storytelling game okay. right so here's how i think about the framework and telling it to the right person right yeah, yeah. first yeah. off you got to make sure that the person that you're talking to <laughs> is the right person. has the ability to to, <laughs> yeah. to, to to do whatever the ask is right yeah. um because and, and that's even important to know too because like i'll be honest especially as black founders like fundraising is so much more it's so much more difficult for us right because oh, when you raise a, 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 a funding round usually the first round they call that the family and friends round mm-hmm. yep. but when we started the family and friends round I'm like I ain't got no family or friends nope. who could write me a six figure check thank you like, yeah. like, exactly or that would be willing to if they could yeah right. exactly you know that part right yeah. Yeah. And, and a part of that for me too I had to learn immediately as I started to go out to a lot of the other black business owners that I knew and things like that like I learned really quickly being a millionaire and being able to write a million dollar check are entirely different things. Mm. You know what I mean? So right away I had to even like check what I thought I knew when it came down to like who actually is a high net worth individual. Okay. Right? Okay. Like an angel investor, someone yeah. who can really write a meaningful check. That like because a lot of these people in the culture that I look up to who have created the songs that are like legendary, mm-hmm. right? Created businesses that I'm like, I really respect. Again, not everyone who's a millionaire can write a million dollar check. Right? Very right? true. Right. That net worth um, on Google be wrong. Facts. <laughs> yeah. That too, right? Mm-hmm. So I say that to just say that, like, first you got to know who these people are and do your research. Um, but here's the the structure of the storytelling framework that I believe in. The first part of the story is what is the problem you're solving, mm-hmm. right? We all know every business exists to solve a problem, yep. right? Yep. If you're not solving a problem, you don't have a business. You don't have a business. You have a passion project, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the first part is what is the problem you're solving? Can you articulate that clearly? Secondly, when it comes down to it, why are you the best person in the world to solve the problem you're solving? Mm. Right? Because what I learned very quickly is people don't invest in ideas. People don't invest in business models. People invest in entrepreneurs. People invest in people, Mm -hmm. right? So the story that we had to tell is, why is Dave and Will the best jockeys for this horse that is wreck? Right? So how do you really start to, to, to articulate that right Mm -hmm. and for me like i was saying earlier yeah we're young we're 30 years old so we're very close to this creative culture this creator economy that's emerging Mm -hmm. we're digital natives i grew up you know on social media Mm -hmm. right Right. so that gave us a certain perspective and all this stuff um so there's that the third part what do you need to accomplish the goal of the business Mm -hmm. right a lot of tools, people, resources, right? Like, like basically, what are you about to spend this money on that you're asking me for? Oh mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, I need funding, I need funding. But then if you ask them what they're going to spend it on, they, they, they haven't planned that out. They yet. don't have the budget that says here's how every dollar is going to be spent, yeah. which is important. So yeah. now I feel like I'm not going to get this money back. Yeah, right. Because they have no, they haven't figured out how how they're going to outsource this money right. what what they're going to do when they're going to do it there's no plan what's the strategy right? there's no strategy I'm not going to get my money exactly back. so right away what do you need to be successful and and spell that out right the time to figure out what to do with the money is not when you have it you know what I mean it's way 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 before yep. so being able to do the hard work of the research of like okay cool we're going to put X amount into marketing and that marketing is split between this source and that source because I know that that's what's going to work for our market mm-hmm. and that's going to get them engaged and come into the space mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. right what's the system so that's step three what do you need to be successful the fourth part and this is really important what does the world look like when you achieve your goal Mm. right so a lot of the story that i was telling to our angel investors were okay this is the state of the creative economy now Mm -hmm. we know the histories of the record labels and how they've preyed on artists Mm -hmm. right things like that so the world that i believe we should be working towards is the one where every creative especially creatives of color have access to all the tools they need right Mm -hmm. why because we talking about gentrification in every city around the uh, the country right Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day we need to be teaching ownership and i believe we should teach ownership to people through the lens of what we're already passionate about Mm -hmm. right which is culture we we know everything about culture right so i want to be able to help a young creative get to the point where they could build a business that they own so that way when gentrification comes they get to not complain about it, but they can participate and actually push their neighborhoods in the direction they want to see them go. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell that story. You know what I mean? So tell that story and then land it on the fifth point, which is the most important part of it all. What's in it for them when Mm -hmm. you're successful. Right. 
And if you can tell those five parts, right? What's the problem? You know what I mean? Why am I positioned well to solve the problem? Here's what I need to get it done. This is what the world's gonna look like when I solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And then fifth, here's what's in it for you. Right. If you can tell that story, if you hit them all well, people are looking for places to put money. Yes. So that's, yeah. that's my tip for fundraising. Um, but the thing I would even say before you even start, please don't go fundraising asking people for money when you haven't taken what you've had what you have to the furthest possible place okay mm -hmm. like before we ask anybody for money we already had 350 members in the warehouse mm -hmm. okay. no heat no ac walking mm -hmm. up four flights of stairs right the equipment wasn't amazing but the energy of the space was there and people were coming every yeah. day. 350 members? 350 members at Ninth and Dolphin that's in the window factory, man. right? Wow. And that's what gave us the confidence to go and raise the money. Mm -hmm. So my earliest investors, I was like, listen, uh, I need y'all to trust us on this, but we this is where we're coming to. And right. I would walk them up the stairs to the fourth floor and smell like weed in the hallway and all this. <laughs> I said, I need y'all to put on the vision goggles. But that was the proof that like, I, as a founder, was not going to take no for an answer because mm -hmm. I was already thugging it out, giving people the experience with as little as possible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Some of our rent at those spaces were like, oh, this room's $600 a month. Rent here at the fashion district is way more than that, right? Okay, yeah. But, you know, and I'm, I'm a man of faith, but God says, like, if you steward well with little, he'll give you a lot. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us were like, all right, well, I can't do my business until I get funding so they don't start. But it's like, you're not the kind of entrepreneur that someone wants to fund. Yeah. Right. Because it should be like, yo, and this is what the story became later. It was like, yo, we're going to do this whether you support or not, but I want to invite you to be a part of this. Yeah. Right? And right. that just changes the whole energy. Yeah. Because right? yeah. people want to, people want that fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They want to, right? Yeah. You yeah. know? They do. So, but anyway, but that's my, my rant and my tip on fundraising. It's a storytelling game. Yeah, it's pretty sure good. Because I was always, I've always been curious because I know. I knew it was like a serious move. Yes. And a serious investment. Yes. You know, and someone had to believe in it. Yes. Because it's not, you You can't, can't just be you and Dave. Nope. It had to not be somebody all. else that knew somebody that said, okay, listen, mm -hmm. these guys are serious. This yep. is where it's going to be. So I appreciate you sharing sure. that because that Absolutely. was important. And, and fundraising is a great, um, a great thing to talk about for our audience because it's something that black entrepreneurs really really struggle with yes. yeah. I'm glad you were able to because we like you said we go to our first tier friends and family and nobody and our friends and family is going to give us a five six figure check right right. like it's just not going to happen right. it's real like I'm so, glad he yeah. touched on that yeah. Yeah. yeah so I would just end it by saying like you know the first thing is your customers are mm -hmm. your first investor yeah so if you can't find a way to like give that value to your customers at the smallest version mm -hmm. then you, you're not even ready for the check because you didn't learn yeah. all the ins and outs mm -hmm. of like what could go wrong yeah right yeah at the warehouse i learned so much about what the experience needed to be <laughs> and i couldn't have learned those things any other way than just doing it yeah right. and i wanted to make all those mistakes there yeah, yeah. i didn't want to have you know as rent as big as it is here and then be learning these little mistakes yeah. you Absolutely know what i mean not. so because yeah. you still got other problems that you're going to have to learn here. New problems. Yeah. New problems. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They don't stop piling up. No. no. Yeah. They now don't. I'm about to go to Miami. It's like different problems. Yeah. Right? Different problems. But see, so. the, 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 the will you have yeah. to take that on <laughs> is incredible, man. Like And like you said, you just got to take action. Yeah. Don't hesitate. And and if, if it looks... If it looks like it's going to be difficult, if it looks like it's going to be tough, that's... All the more reason why you should go hard yeah. and go yeah. right at it. You just gave him a gem. That's I believe in that so hard mm -hmm. because what people don't realize when like you when you put yourself in environments where like you have to learn, you have to solve the big problems, is what you choose to work on also works on you. Mm. Right? So if you're yeah. the kind of person that avoids hard things you're never gonna actually put yourself through the challenges that produce the lessons that actually make you grow. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> Look, I'll, t I'll put it to you like this. I was a kid, um, I used to play NBA 2K, or I'm sorry, NBA Live mm -hmm. before 2K mm -hmm. took over. I used to play that joint on rookie mode because I love how it feels to just blow yeah, somebody out by 50. Exactly. Right? I'm going to win. Right? Super easy. But yeah. then what would happen is when my cousins would come over, because I was playing on rookie, when I played somebody who was actually good, was I would get you up. every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was like, oh, because I'm too afraid to like do it difficult when no one's looking, 
I'll never be able to do the difficult thing when people are here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I had to reprogram myself and I was like, all right, I got to play on Hall of Fame mode. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then if I do that and I actually do the hard thing of like getting my, my butt whooped forever, yeah. eventually it's like, all right, cool. Can't nobody see me in this now because I don't know already. See, right. You know Man, what I mean? go on rookie mode now. He's really killing me. Right. <laughs> you know? It's not even fun now. It's it's right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's no challenge. Right. You need right. the challenge. Yeah. yeah. So embrace the challenges, man. Challenge. Yeah. So we're going to get into this book club segment. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Book club. One more. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? This is a good one. This is Tiff's favorite. It's my favorite. Okay, cool. Yep. Let's she loves it. the book club. I do. So I like books. So let's talk about it. Let's yep. talk about it. All right, y'all. We'll be back. <laughs> 